we're starting to build a pretty decent level for our simple obstacle course game here. We've talked about making these actors that we have here, and last time we got introduced to the level blueprints, specific programming for the specific level that we're in. But that video ran a little bit long, and I wanted to talk about one more thing that I want to show you. So we've discussed a lot of pre-made events, and what I haven't shown you yet so far is the ability to make your own custom events. And that's mostly useful for organizational purposes up until this point anyway. Because today we're going to be talking about this bottom category over here. I think the easiest way to tell you that would be to just straight up show you. So what we're going to do is I have our blueprint for our coin here, which actually I was thinking we're using a sphere mesh for this. Uh, I think Unreal just has a cinema mesh. So we probably just want to use that to make it look a little bit more like a coin. It's not perfect, but again, we're not making assets here. We're making just the functionality and the, the basic principles of the engine. So now that we have a more coin looking coin, and let's add a rotating movement component to it as well. Why won't we? Uh, and rotate that at like 25 units. I don't know, something like that. We have a more recognizable coin. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to go into the event graph and we have our event actor begin overlap. And when we destroy this actor, this actually fires off another event. And that event is event destroyed is what it's called. So when this happens, this function also calls this event, which is very nice because that means that we can put in something that happens every time a coin gets destroyed. But how does that actually work? And how can we replicate that with our own functions and our own events? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And that is what event dispatchers are. When this function is run, which I can't show you because that's a C++ thing, what it's doing is it has an event dispatcher. So let's call this coin picked up. And this event dispatcher can do a number of different things. If we pull this in, unlike a normal variable, which we can get or set, this one can be called, or we can bind, or unbind, or unbind all, or event, or assign. In this case, we're going to call the event dispatcher. So what we do here is when this coin is picked up, this event dispatcher is just going to shout out into the world, hey, I've just been picked up. Anybody interested in what happens when I am picked up, you might want to do your thing now. That doesn't necessarily mean that anything is listening to this actor. It just gives us the capability of telling another actor, hey, you listen to this one. And when this event dispatcher gets called, you execute a specific event of your own. That is basically how the destroy actor to event destroyed works. There's an event dispatcher in here, which automatically calls the event destroyed. We have to do a little bit more setup for it than that though. So let's uh, compile this again and go back to our level for a second. Let's put in a coin just as a example for right now and opening up our level blueprint, create a reference to that coin. Because now that we have this specific reference, we can just like type in, I think I called it coin pickup. We can assign coin picked up or we can bind to it, which is the same thing. So if we assign it, it automatically creates a new event for us as well. So let's say we call this event first coin picked up. We want to move this over to begin play because we want to bind this as soon as the game starts. And now, anything we put into this custom event that we have over here, this code will run whenever this first coin gets picked up. Every other coin in the level, it's not going to run for. It's only going to run for that specific coin because that specific coin is going to call out into the ether and just say, hey, I've been picked up. And this event is specifically listening to this coin. 
So let's do something like get the player character here and we can cast that to BP third person character and we can jump. That's just a function that exists on the third person character. So now when we run into this first coin, our character will automatically jump. But when we run into any other coin in level, so let's just duplicate this, we won't jump. So let's uh, play from here to skip uh, our cutscene trigger box. If we run into the second coin, it'll just get picked up. But if we run into this one, it'll get picked up and make us jump. That might not seem too useful right now, but let's think about this for a second. Let's say we have an enemy that is guarding a door to the final boss fight. Something like that, right? Every actor, as we've discussed, has an event already for being destroyed. So what we can do is we can select any actor and create a reference to it. And instead of using our own event call, we can simply say bind on destroyed. And we get another one of these nodes and we will have to make our own custom event. So let's do that as well. Add a custom event and let's call that open door just for the sake of this example, right? We tried to connect these two things up, but it doesn't work. And that is because on destroyed, needs you to also have an input for your event. So if you come over here to the right hand side, we can create an input uh, and that would be something like the destroyed actor and that will be a actor object reference. And now those should be able to connect up. That is the reason by the way, that it's usually easier to use a sign because it will automatically make a custom event which has all of the parameters that it needs all of the inputs but as you could see before we have a bunch of other events as well so we also have an uh on take any damage take point damage or radio damage that's to do with unreal's build-in damage system which we might talk about at some point in the future and of course we have the actor begin and and overlap or when it gets hit by a collision those are all event dispatches that you can assign to with other actors so if we for instance want to have on take any damage if we have a boss fight that needs to spawn particles when it gets hit we can put those particle emitters in the world and just assign them to on take any damage for that boss fight and then that boss fight doesn't need to have any knowledge or any references to those particle systems but those particle systems can just listen in to when that boss fight tells them to fire and that is the really powerful thing here is that it's a one-way communication and usually you would think one-way communication that's just going to go horribly horribly wrong but the thing is the sender of this message the sender of the event dispatcher doesn't need to know anything about your receivers so it doesn't need to be dependent on them either when those change or when those get removed the sender of the message does not care and that will prevent a lot of crashing of your game not having to intermingle things so tightly together that things are now dependent on each other i'll take you into the block out for a level in my own game that we have over here and open up the level blueprint just to show you a implementation of it that I am using myself outside of the context of this is just a tutorial. So over here we have a enemy that I'm using uh, for the combat tutorial of my game and we have a sequence player here that opens up this little bridge over here and I only want this to open up whenever this enemy has been defeated because I want to know that the player has a good enough feel for what the combat inputs are to defeat this enemy before they can move on altogether. So what we have in the level blueprints is on begin play, I get a reference to that specific enemy, which is called a BP, basic demon, and I get its on destroyed event, and I bind my own custom event to that, which first place that specific bridge opening animation that we saw in the beginning, and then also I have something called a blocking volume here, which is this little square over here. And all that is, is just some solid collision that doesn't allow the player to move through it. Uh, because otherwise, of course, they would fall down 
into this hole if they try to move over it. So that also gets destroyed whenever this enemy gets destroyed. So let's remove this first coin that makes us jump and do something a little bit more interesting with this second coin over here using the event dispatches. Opening the level blueprint, let's remove all the event dispatcher stuff that we had before. Create a reference to BP coin 2 and assign on destroy. And we're going to spawn in a new coin when that happens. So we get the spawn actor from class node and we use the BP coin class to spawn in. Then the spawn transform is going to be... Uh, we're going to split that up actually. The transform location, rotation and scale are going to be separately set. And here we get the destroyed actors transform. So we get the transform. And this is why the event that you link to the event dispatcher needs to have a matching set of inputs. Because this event dispatcher is also passing through, hey, this destroyed actor is this specific actor that call out and that can be a number of different input parameters that can be floats or bools or ints or any of the ones that we've talked about before let's split that structure pin the rotation and the scale can be the same but for the location we're going to add to that and we're going to split the structure pin for the x y and z the Z we're going to add nothing to, but we're going to add something to the X and our Y. So have it spawn in a slightly random location. So let's get a float in range, a random float. And let's say it spawns between minus 200 and positive 200 away in both the X and Y directions. Now, if we compile and we play from here, and we pick up this coin, we can see it spawns in a new coin. And when we pick that up, it doesn't spawn in a new coin. Because again, that event dispatcher is specifically talking about this coin. So any coins that spawn in after this one aren't going to have that same functionality. Unless we program something that allows for that. How do we deal with that? Well, that's actually remarkably easy. Because uh, as you can see, the spawn actor node here has a return value of a BP coin object, which is an actor. So this one has a bind undestroyed on it as well. And you'll probably be able to tell that we can bind multiple event dispatchers on the same event here. And now whenever this new coin gets spawned, it will immediately bind the event that spawns the next one to the undestroyed dispatcher. And that then allows us to have a infinite amount of new spawning coins, which at the moment I can't reach this one. So a little extra sophistication in the system probably wouldn't hurt. In this specific case though, you do want to uh, worry about the fact that you can see here I changed this from minus 200 to positive 200 to uh, using 500 instead. If I just use like uh, between five and six, for instance, so that always spawns in more or less the same location. You will note that it doesn't spawn the next one and it throws an error. So there is a little bit of iffiness that comes with it spawning right on top of the player in this case, which is slightly annoying. For now, the easiest way to deal with that is number one, making sure that these numbers are hard enough. And number two, in the spawn BP coin node, putting the collision handling override to try to adjust location, don't spawn uh, if still colliding, or but always spawn, one or the other, doesn't really matter. This will try to make sure that it doesn't overlap with anything when it's spawning. And now we have a coin that infinitely spawns wherever. It does seem to be on a bit of a diagonal, which is weird. That makes sense because there's only ever one float getting generated for both the X and the Y, which is less than amazing. So we want to generate two different ones for those. And now it should spawn randomly in some location. Of course, 
we're probably going to want to go into brush editing here and make this entire platform a fair bit bigger in order to accommodate this randomly spawning coin. And also, I can now walk around the cutscene trigger, which is quite nice indeed. So now we have a chain of endlessly randomly spawning coins until it overlaps with the player, at which point it does throw an error. We're just going to kind of ignore that for now. I want to reiterate, though, the brilliant thing about this is any other coins that we put in uh, will not be part of this chain and will not have that same functionality here unless we also and begin play bind it to this event so we'll see that all these coins when i pick them up they don't spawn any new ones because they have not been bound to that event then when i pick up this one this one will actually spawn in new coins when they get picked up i hope that gets a decent idea across as to how event dispatchers work and how you can use them i have some more examples maybe to show later i've got one example in my own game that has to do with ui though which we haven't talked about that yet so don't really want to show that yet but maybe when we get to that ui bit i'll show you the event dispatcher setup in my own game that i'm using in my ui as well if you don't quite fully understand everything that we've talked about here today don't worry about it it can be a very confusing topic just move forward keep learning and eventually things will click and you can always come back to this video after you've learned a little bit more to maybe grasp this entire topic just a little bit deeper and really get familiar with it i think we've done quite a lot of programming heavy stuff over the past few parts of this series though so i think next time it's time for something a little fun and a little bit more different and we're going to talk about setting up some fun and interesting lighting for our level here so i'll gladly see you all back when we do that and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thank you to eleanor for supporting at the cave digger tier on patreon